Well, we're talking about why we wait. And so I was given the definition of wait. What does it mean to wait? Um, these are some expressions. And so when you hear these expressions, you can kind of understand what somebody's trying to say with these words, right? The first one is wait, what? The second is wait, exclamation mark. Now, wait a minute. Wait just one second. And then I said, as Bernie Maddox said, wait a minute. <laughs> we ran it all together. If I say, wait, what? Wait, what? You guys can get what my expression is. Mm -hmm. Wait a minute. Now, wait a minute. They all mean something different, yes. but they all mean to wait. So the, the definition of wait means to hold on, to grasp or support something with one's hand, to pause, to sit tight, remain firmly in one's place. Wait means to stay where one is or delay action until a particular time or until something else happens. Wait is used to indicate that one is eagerly impatient to do something um, or for something to happen. Wait also means to stand by, be present while something bad is happening, but fail to take any action to stop it. Hold up also means wait. And that's usually a situation that causes delay, especially to a journey. Hold back also means to wait, is to hesitate to act or speak, to be patient. Uh, delay also is a form of wait, and that is a period of time by which something is late or postponed. And also to wait is to expect, to regard something as likely to happen. Biblically, waiting is an active verb indicating that to wait is to be aware through all of the senses of what is occurring around you and discerning the right time to do the next thing. So while we wait, we usually ask, what are we waiting for? I know I've asked that, mm -hmm. what am I waiting for? We may be waiting for a breakthrough, waiting for a spiritual change or a push, waiting on the Lord to answer our prayers. But we all should be waiting and preparing for the Lord's return. Jesus didn't give us an exact time that he was coming back to get us. So what do we do, just wait? Or do we get ready while we wait? Mm, that's good. Good. John 14 verses 1 through 4 in the NLT, if you guys will go there. <clears throat> John 14, 1 through 4, it says, don't let your hearts be troubled. Trust in God and trust also in me. There is more than enough room in my father's home. If this were not so, would I have told you that I'm going to prepare a place for you? When everything is ready, I will come and get you so that you will always be with me where I am and you know the way to where I'm going. Okay. Yes. So today we're talking about while we wait. Normally during this time of year, we have a Christmas time message where we're talking about Jesus being born. But today the Lord directed me to talk about his second coming, okay? There's a lot to do while we wait on the Lord's return. Hallelujah. And sometimes we tend, for, tend to forget that the first time Jesus came, many missed it. They were waiting for the Messiah. They missed all the prophetic signs and all the prophetic words that have went forth, those, those scriptures that said he's coming. He's, he's coming to be born to a virgin. He'll be come through on a donkey. All those things, they missed it. And so they missed Jesus. Sadly, people are going to do the same thing with the second coming. 
Hallelujah. I'm Good. sure a lot of people say that the Lord won't come back until I get ready to live a saved life. Come on. Okay. But the Lord's not going to wait forever for us to get right and for us to get saved. Yes. He ain't going to wait forever for people to decide when they want to get ready. The truth is, according to scripture, no one knows when he's coming back. So why not just be ready already? Hallelujah. Yes. yes. Matthew 24 and 42 says, watch therefore, for ye know not what hour the Lord doth come. And that's King James Version. Verse 44 says, therefore, be ye also ready. For in such an hour as you think not the son of man coming. So we're not going to know. Jesus didn't say I'm coming back on December 11th at 8.30 a.m. So that we could have been ready at 8.30 a.m. He didn't say that. So that means just get ready anyway. <laughs> we had a shift in, in the program this morning. Come on. I have my boots and all my stuff all ready to go. And then I said, okay. She said, well, we're going to go on Zoom. I said, well, okay, let me put this dress back in there. Come on. But then we still going on and we still going to be recording or whatever to go on YouTube. I said, oh, I still got to put some something. That's good. I'm dressed up here. Hallelujah. Preach, girl. Partially ready. Woo. My feet got the house shoes on and I got the sweatpants on. But I'm partially ready. That's right? good, I'm preacher. Comfortable. Right. But if Jesus was coming back, I need to be all the way ready. Praise the Lord. Ooh, glory to God. We got a lot to do. Ooh, hallelujah. We got to keep good and ready no matter how long it takes. Yes. The other night I had the pleasure of, of sitting, and I'm not going to say babysitting, but sitting with um, my husband's 96 year old grandmother. Mm. And I went over there and I took all my books and my notebook and I told her, I said, well, I'm getting ready. I have, I have to prepare the sermon for Sunday. So she said, oh. And so I, you know, I had to sit in the little room. My, she's staying at my sister-in-law's house. She's not at her house. But she got two things on her bed. She got like a queen size bed. She got two things. She got a box of Kleenex and her Bible. My, my, my. So when I said, well, I'm working on the sermon and I went and I got my stuff set up in the little chair. She put, picked up her Bible. She said, do you need to use this? <laughs> I, said, I said, I got my own, but thank you. And so it touched my heart to know, cause you know, we talked about everything from, as they say, from soup to nuts the other night, but we talked about the word as well. And so she always asked about the church and always asked how the church is doing, always ask about Pastor Paula. But I could tell you that even at 96, she know to keep that word right next to her in that bed. She go open that Bible up every day and still continues to pour into her spirit yes. the nuggets that come from that word. Yes, yes, yes. And so Amen. even when we get old, and you know, you you can only lay in the bed. We still getting ready if we continue to pour the word into our spirit. And so saying all of that, I could tell you that at 96, I be I, I, at 54, I'm making more noise getting in and out of the bed than she did at 96. Come on, come on. Because I'm gonna be over here grunting and grunting and groaning, and she just raised up and got up and got on a little walker and whatever. But I'm just saying that to say, at almost a hundred years old, she still knows how to read the word, and she probably pick up her Bible more than the young people do. And so that just touched me because she's still getting ready. So while we wait, we have to continue to get ready. When you have to go somewhere or meet somebody at a specific time, you have to allow yourself time to do what? If you got to meet somebody at a certain time, you got to get ready. And I remember one of my sons, because he used to really irritate me 
I would tell him, he said, oh, well, mom, can you take me this and that, whatever? I got to be there at such and such time. And I said, okay. And I'm going to allow myself time to get ready and get there. And I said, okay, I'm going to pick you up about, you know, two o'clock. Uh-huh. And I get there thinking, okay, he going to walk out at two o'clock. No. Do you think he was ready? No, he just got in the shower at like 159. And I'm like, but what I have to do? Come on. Did I have to wait? Because he didn't do that to me. Because if my husband was going to do it, he, my husband said, oh, well, you got to find your own way. But I sat there and I waited. I was irritated, but I waited mm-hmm. because something important had to take place. He had to be somewhere important. The thing is, is he should have allotted time to get ready. Yes. We are in this time frame right now that Jesus is waiting on us to get ready. Amen. Amen. So that reminded me of the 10 virgins, the 10 uh, foolish virgins, as it says. That's found in Matthew uh, chapter 25. I'm not going to read it because of the time frame, but it's verses 1 through 13. <clears throat> and he, Jesus was talking, uh, talking about the parable of these virgins where there were five virgins that went and got prepared and they got the oil for their lamps. There were five foolish versions that said, oh, we got plenty of time. We're not going to do it. We're not going to worry about it until later. And then the time came and they didn't have oil for their lamps. And they said, oh, wait, the market's closed. We can't get no oil. So they asked the wise versions, can, virgins, can we get that? They said, uh-uh, we already got our oil. We ready. So the ones who weren't ready when they decided to leave and try to go find some oil, the bridegroom came and they locked, he locked the door. They was locked out. They couldn't get in. And so all of that is a, a parable that Jesus said, we need to get ready while there's time to do it. Don't wait till the last minute. And I know a lot of people are probably like, okay, well, I just wait till bad stuff start happening and then I'm going to get saved. Well, we are already there. We are ready. That stuff is already happening. Come on. We don't have COVID for the two years going on three going on three lost a whole lot of people in 2020 massive amounts of people the mm-hmm. whole world on lockdown if that ain't a sign for you to start praying and get your life right and get ready then i don't know what is there's a song called um uh, i'm not ready by naomi rain mm-hmm. and i played it for my daughter the other day And she could relate because, you know, most people at that age, they're not ready to change. I think they think they have a whole lot of time to get saved and get ready. But guess what? That time is now. There's a whole lot of things that we need to do to get ready. A whole lot of things that we need to do while we wait. I didn't give a key scripture because my main two scriptures are are chapters that I use the books of Isaiah chapter 40 and Matthew chapter 24. Those are the two um, main scriptures uh, that I reference in this lesson. And I also just want to put a reminder out there. I'm sorry. What was the first one, Steph? Isaiah 40, Matthew 24. Okay. Um, and also to keep in mind that the rapture and the second coming are um, two different things, according to the word. Uh, yeah. And those are for the scripture references for those are First Thessalonians chapter four, verses sixteen and seventeen, and First Corinthians fifteen. Verses 51 and 52, those explain the rapture. Okay, wait, sorry, Steph, start over. I was writing. Okay. Start over. First Thessalonians chapter four, verses 16 and 17. You know what, I'll just read them. 
Ashley's I didn't write them. in the chat too. Oh, okay. okay. Okay, thanks, Ash. I didn't I didn't write them, I didn't write them in here, so I just referenced them. Um yeah. First Thessalonians 4, 16, 17, first Corinthians 15, 51, and 52. Those are regarding um yeah, I don't know what's going on with my stuff. Um the the rapture and Matthew 24 verses 29 through 30 and Matthew 25 verses 31 through 34 explain the second coming. Okay. Did you get those um stuff you're going too fast? You gotta slow me down. Mm -hmm. Right. Sorry. Y'all right. Y'all right. got it. I can come in Matthew 24. You got it. You got it, uh Ash. Hey, can you repeat the Matthew 24 for me, please? Matthew 24, 29 through 30. Matthew 25, 31 through 34. And this is the second coming? That's the second coming. Okay. The first two are the rapture. Okay. So what does it mean to wait on the Lord? In the scriptures, the word wait means to hope, to anticipate, and to trust. To hope and trust in the Lord requires faith, patience, humility, meekness, long-suffering, keeping the commandments, and enduring to the end. I learned the books of the Bible when I was a kid. At Faith Temple, we learned the Beatitudes and the 23rd Psalm and the Ten Commandments and Proverbs 22 and 6. We had that one first. That was the first one. We learned a little bit about Adam and Eve and about Abraham and Noah. Well, when we learned about Noah, we just learned that Noah built the ark. The animals got in and then it rained for 40 days and 40 nights. We didn't learn about how Noah was given the instructions on how to build the ark how the people who were just living their lives as usual uh, and how some of the people who were living their lives as usual laughed at him and made fun of him mm -hmm. and called him crazy. What are you building? You don't need, what is that? And they asked, you know, how people do. But while he waited for the unexpected rain to fall, he remained faithful and obedient doing what God instructed him to do. Yes. Yes, yes, yes. All those people who laughed at him, well, they drowned. <laughs> but he waited. He waited on the instruction from God. And then he waited for rain, which they didn't even know what that was. And he even told him how to organize the animals. God told him how to organize the animals. Can you imagine having to get all these animals and get spaces for them? because animals don't get along and all that kind of stuff. The animals, you know, I'm sure they came to them, but picking the, to, the right ones to be able to carry them on so that we still have those same animals today. He had to organize that. That means he had to be in tune in hearing what God had to say, but he also had to be in a place to wait, right? The Bible explains it like it took place calmly. Like, oh, the animals just lined up and got in the boat. And I could tell you, when I had to go bathe them two dogs, it take me and Trent trying to get them in the tub. <laughs> we both would be walking around with back aches and aches and pains trying to wrestle them 80 pound dogs. So can you imagine all of the animals? Hmm. The word says that the animals got in, everybody got in, his family got in, and then God shut the door. Hallelujah. Ooh. Ark. Hallelujah. And then we started and it rained for 40 days. We didn't learn that as a kid. They didn't say that Noah wasn't ready. Didn't say that. It didn't say that they had to go while the, it was raining to open the door back up and pick up the rest of the animals that he forgot to get. Didn't say that. It says that he got everything in, he was obedient, and God shut the door. 
And if you want to read that, that's found in Genesis chapter six and chapter seven. Mm -hmm. So if you stay ready, you don't have to get ready. While we wait, God wants us to press into his presence to wait patiently before his throne. And pastor talked about that this morning, get in silence so we can hear the next set of instructions that he's gonna give us. Yeah. While we wait, he's calling us to come before him with thanksgiving, even if we are still waiting on a promise. The world has so many things that we want and we can get them in an instant, but they're temporary. God's blessings take time, but they are eternal. The purpose of our life here on earth is to grow and develop and be strengthened by our own experiences or through our own experiences, but we also need to rely on God. Now, how do we do this? The scripture gives us an answer with one simple phrase. It says, we wait upon the Lord. Hallelujah. And that's uh, referencing scriptures are Psalm 37 and 9, Psalm 123 and 2, Isaiah 8, 17, and Isaiah 40 and 31. To wait upon the Lord means planting our mustard seeds of faith and nourishing them by waiting and trusting. It means praying just like Jesus did to God, our heavenly father, asking him or, tell, or saying to him, thy will be done. As in Matthew 6 and 10 and Luke 11 and 2. It's not about us, it's about him. Hallelujah. So while we wait, we are allowing our hearts to receive and rely on the Holy Ghost Hallelujah. so that we know all the things that we need to do and that we should do by getting that instruction from the Holy Spirit. While we wait, while we waiting on our breakthroughs and the answers to our prayers, and while we waiting on Jesus to come back, there's a whole lot of stuff that he needs to give us. We got to tune our ears in so that we can go and do the work. Once we receive and rely on the Holy Spirit, we will follow the prompts of the Spirit. And then we will start to see that tribulation worketh patience, as stated in Romans 5 and 3. Uh -huh. We will learn to continue in patience or wait until we are perfected. In other words, the more we wait, the more our faith grows and the more we are perfected the more God can use us to go out and do the work that's necessary to gather the people into salvation. We all go through seasons where we're waiting on God. And I could tell you that's the hardest thing when you're waiting and waiting and waiting and waiting and every day that thing is right here. That thing is like a lump in your throat and it won't go away because you're so anxious. When is it gonna happen? You could be waiting on the promise that he made. Okay, I'm waiting for my family to get saved. It's like a lump in my throat because I want to just go and shake them going, come on, y'all, what are y'all waiting for? And he made it so that we could wait on him, rely on him, trust in him. We could be waiting for the fulfillment of the dreams that he's given us. Okay, he's given me some visions. And I'd say, okay, and I did nothing because I'm waiting. Okay, God, what you want me to do with this? But in the meantime, he's perfecting me. He's okay. teaching me patience. He's teaching me how to trust him I to take care that. of the situation. I have the vision that's going this way. But his vision of it may be this way. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Do I know better than God? No. So I have to trust him. Could be waiting on deliverance from a hardship or from a, a thing that's keeping us from fully diving into God. Deliverance from a thing that's keeping us 
teetering on the fence. We ain't were quite ready to put that other leg over. Waiting on God, just give me a sign, Lord. What do I need to do? He's going to do it in his time when he knows that you're ready. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Whatever reason we're waiting on God, our walk through our physical life as well as through our spiritual life is always going to be paved with waiting periods. Thank you, Lord. God does his best work in us during the waiting. He develops us. He makes us uh, take our roots deep down in him for them to grow deeper into him so that we can grow big and strong like a tree and bear fruit that glorify him. Thank you, Jesus. Waiting on God is tough, but he knows that. And so when we're feeling weary from waiting and we start telling God, okay, look, this is taking too long. Why I got to keep waiting? I don't feel like waiting no more. When we're frustrated and wondering, well, okay, is he, are you even there, God? Are you going to even show up? What's... That's when he works best. If we just continue to hold on as all those definitions I gave you earlier. So he gave us some things to do while we wait for such a time as this. Number one, he tells us, I'm sorry, he wants us to tell him all about it, <laughs> but wait without complaining. <laughs> Waiting on God provides fertile soil for the complaints to grow. <laughs> Okay. Say that again, so, Step. Waiting on God provides fertile soil for complaints to grow. Woo! When you are in that, yeah, that uh, impatient person in a waiting period, it's going to be full of complaints ready to just blurb out. But that's when you tell God all about it. God, I'm not comfortable. I don't like this. I don't like this feeling. What's going to happen, Lord? And like Pastor said earlier, we dump all of this stuff. We just talk, 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 talk. And he sits and he listens. But then we need to sit there also and listen to what he has to say. Because while we wait, if we begin to tune our ears to hear him, we can go to the process a little smoother. Most of us do want to complain. This is taking too long. Are we there yet? <laughs> when is it happening? Is it not going to happen? Lord, if it ain't going to happen, just tell me. How long, Lord? Complaining is a sign of spiritual immaturity and a total lack of reverence for God. It's saying God is not uh, going to do a good enough job of running things and that we could probably do it better. So when we start complaining about it, God may actually lengthen the waiting time. And I can remember when I used to be bad, <laughs> my mom would put me on punishment. And so one time she had me on punishment and it was taking forever. And I was like, huh, okay, so when am I gonna get off punishment? And my mom was real calm. She said, uh, the more you keep asking, I'm going to keep adding more time. I was like, what? So I was mad and I done stomped off in my room. But I was like, oh, good. You know, a whole nother week went and I want to go and ask her, okay, look, am I about, when am I going about to get off restriction? But I have remembered, she said, if I come and ask her again, she's going to keep adding more time. God does the same thing. When you keep being impatient and you keep wanting to rush God, he gonna give you more time Come because on. the lesson is in the waiting. Hallelujah. So while we wait, be patient, listen to God and start plugging in. Constantly pray, bring your concerns to him. Just don't complain about it. Amen. Amen. Instead Amen. of complaining, Amen. begin praising. Take the time to create a perfect 
breakthrough for you. He is taking the time to create a perfect breakthrough for you. The least you could do is start praising him in advance. Hallelujah. So you start praising him for that breakthrough and that promotion and that raise and that house, and that husband, that wife, that healing, and that spiritual promise. Rejoice in hope and be patient in tribulation, be constant in prayer. And that's from Romans 12, verses 12. Philippians 4, 6 through 7 says, don't be anxious for anything, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your request be made known to God. Bring it all to him. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Our waiting should not be that of inaction. Instead, we should be actively praying, praising, giving him worship for bringing the deliverance and for bringing the peace and for bringing the healing. Remember that while the rest of the world is out here panicking, we don't operate as the world does. Come on. So instead of panicking, we need to be praying. Preach, preach, preach. Number two says to wait in faith with expectation. Okay. When you're waiting on God, the most important part is to wait with faith and with expectation. Hallelujah. How do we do that? <laughs> While we wait, we are to eagerly and with confident expectation oh, bring our request to God. Thank you. Okay, that God will come through. We got to believe that. We should expect his promise with anticipation and with joy. Okay, so instead of complaining, oh Lord, how long? I, I can't, I can't, I can't. We need to know what we want and expect that from him. We know that the other scripture said, be, uh, it's gonna, he gonna surpass our own understanding. So what we already are envisioning and expecting, he can do 10 times greater than that. As long as we come with that expectation and with that faith. Waiting with expectation shows that we trust in God because we tend to believe what we see, right? Yes. What yes. is faith? It is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen. Where are you preaching this? Hebrew, that's Hebrews 11 and 1. So it's also a sign of a mature faith when we put our trust in God and we believe what we can't see. As humans, we, like I just said, we believe what we see. I believe that you guys is all on here on Zoom. A couple of people got their screens off. That's what I see. But I can't see is that all of this word is getting in and starting to work on your inside. Girl, but preach this thing, Stephanie. You can see that. So I have faith and expectation that the word that comes forth, even this word, is going to change your life in some way or another through the power of the Holy Spirit. Preach, girl. Amen. So we have to learn to trust God when we're in these waiting periods. Okay. So that then we eventually will see the promise that God has for us. Number three, we need to write. And this is my personal favorite. We need to write out our prayers our concerns, how you feel about waiting, what your expectation is of your prayer. Document the waiting process. We see vision boards uh, nowadays where people, um, you know, they even get a big old board or a piece of paper and they put things that they want. You know, they might clip out some stuff out of magazine. They got cars and houses and different stuff. They got color schemes and decorations. It's a vision board. This is what we're going to start with, a blank board, and this is what we want to see the outcome be, right? It ain't any different than with your prayers. That's good. You make a spiritual vision board. This is what I want. I want Dominic, Destiny, Darius, Trent saved and coming to church, actively participating, using their spiritual gifts. That's my prayer. Write it out. Write it out. Habakkuk 2 and 1. That's it. Uh, through 4. 
uh, yeah, Habakkuk 2, 1 through 4. It says, I will stand on my, upon my watch, set me upon the tower, and will watch to see what he will say unto me and what I shall answer when I am reproved. Verse 2 says, the Lord answered me and said, write the vision and make it plain upon tables that he may uh, run that readeth it. For the vision is yet for an appointed time, but at the end it shall speak and not lie. Though it tarry, wait for it. While we wait, girl, because it will surely come, it will not tarry. Verse four says, behold, his soul which is lifted up is not upright in him, but the just shall live by faith. So write it out. I got notebooks, I got fountain pens. I went through and looked, I got a box of all the, the sermons, the Bible study notes, the special services, ever since we started the church in 2007. Wow, wow, wow. The Lord has told me to write them down and put them in journals and notebooks. Oof. Girl. I started typing it into my computer. Now my computer messed up. So that means instead of putting it in the computer, I actually need to get my handy dandy pen, my handy dandy notebook and write it. That's good. That's good stuff. And then as you write, you start putting these things down. You might be upset one day. And then the next day, the Lord has revealed something to you and you write it down. And so as you write down and you keep putting this stuff on over the upcoming uh, months that come up, you will start to see how God moved and how God worked through documentation. God is a God of documentation. All of the Bible that we have is because somebody sat down and wrote what God was doing in their life. Come on, come That's on. Why we have the need. Girl, so you're preaching this thing it. here today. We need to write out our expectations of how we want things to work out. We write out our steps of faith, our scriptures, our sermons, our prayers. And we watch and we see how God moves, not only in us, but in the circumstance. And while we wait on the Lord to answer our prayers and we write them down, we do document the move of God in our own life. Right? Amen. Right. right. Write with expectation. Write about your personal spiritual growth. Write about what God actually did. I found one of my old diaries <laughs> while I was cleaning that my um, my mima gave me. And I looked in there and I started reading stuff. I didn't have no dates. It was an undated uh, uh, diary. But I only wrote in it when I was mad. I was like, what? So I'm reading it and I'm like, okay, what is this? And there's probably those times when I was on punishment. Who knows? Never ever wrote what happened when I wasn't mad. What was the point of that? So I have no progression. I just have a couple little entries from when I was upset. Why? Nothing good. It's scripture is the documentation of God's word, the whole Bible. It's his word, it's his revelation that people got, it's whatever was going on in the day and time, it's how he moved through each and every single one of those circumstances. It's a living word that we can still use today and apply it to our circumstances and our situations. And so it's a list of things that happen and another list of things that's to come. And so when we do that in our own personal life, we will have a documentation, something that we can pass on even to our younger generations, our kids and grandkids and whatever, to see how God works and how he moves. Not saying we rewrite in the Bible, but we documenting God's power in our life. We wouldn't have a Bible if people didn't document. And so we got to write it down with expectation and with faith. Beautiful. Amen. Beautiful.
we watch his work and his word come to pass. Number four, while we wait, we continue to learn and continue to obey God's word. As we wait upon the Lord, we are to grow in knowledge of him and his commands for us. And we are diligently to seek him each and every day through each and every circumstance and each and every problem. We also need to learn how to apply his law to our lives. And why do we need to do this? So that we might stay close to God, to avoid drifting into sin or into patterns of disobedience. Very easy for us to get into disobedience. And it's a simple little old thing that I don't want to. That's it. Once you think it, you say it, and you feel it, even if you carry out the act, your attitude is already in an attitude in a pattern of disobedience. So we need to change that. The word of God is the only source of absolute divine authority. And so we plug into the word and we continue to put it in our lives. We operate in God's divine authority. We take the word and put it inside. We start to reflect what it's doing in us outwardly to other people. The divine authority is set for us as servants of Jesus Christ. Yes. God sent his word to accomplish his perfect will for our lives. If God makes a promise to us, he will fulfill it in his time. And there are so many promises given to us in the Bible, and most of us don't even know what they are. Yeah. But these promises reassure us and bring comfort to our lives in our times of trial. And so it's good when we did the Bible study, we started taking keywords and going and starting to search, search the word, came up with some really good scriptures. But that's what we need to do, even in our own circumstance. Come Whatever on. is plaguing us, Come on. bothering us, that got us heavy, take Ooh. that. Hallelujah. Go scriptures up for that issue. And we can make a, we can write out a whole Bible, Bible study lesson on that. Good. But at the same time, we read it. We start applying it to the circumstance. God's going to start working. First, he's going to work on us, and then he's going to work on the situation. So take time to study the word of God. The Lord will uh, show you all the wonderful things that can change your life just in a scripture. Joshua 1 and 8 in the King James Version says, this book of, of the law shall not depart out of thy mouth. Oh, but thou shalt meditate therein day and night, thou, uh, that thou mayest observe and do according to all that is written therein. For then shalt thou uh, shalt, I'm sorry, for then thou shalt make thy way prosperous, and then thou shalt have good success. That's Elder Joshua's scripture. Yes, yes, yes. Psalm 25 verses four and five says, make me know, uh, make me to know your ways, O Lord. Teach me your paths. Lead me in your truth and teach me for you are the God of my salvation. For you, I wait all the day long. Again, waiting on the Lord, but learning his word while we wait. James 1 and 22, King James Version says, but be ye doers of the word and not hearers only, deceiving your own selves. So while we wait, we need to obey the laws and read his word. Plug it in so he can start to work miraculously through us. Number five, while we wait, we're to produce good work. Hallelujah. Apostle Paul says in 2 Timothy 3, 16 and 17, all scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness, that the man of God may be complete, thoroughly equipped for every good work. Woo. So when we put the word in us, now we go out and we share it, we begin to produce good work. And we need to produce good work while we're still waiting on God to change some things for us. God created us to do good works and faith without works is dead. 
But the Bible doesn't say do it, go, do it, go do good works only when life is good. We can still do good work while we're waiting on God and while we're sitting in a situation of tribulation and turmoil. To wait on means to attend someone or to serve them, okay? Like when you go to the restaurant, you got a waiter and they come and they wait on you. They're at your service, right? Come on. So you ask them, they come, they say, okay, what can I get you? And you say, okay, I want some water. And then they come back with your water and you say, oh, wait, let me get a tea. They go back and get your tea. You say, okay, can we get some bread? They come bring you your bread. All right, wait, we need some butter. Oh, wait, can we get some extra butter? They come back and they bring you some extra butter. They say, okay, are you ready to order your food? Okay, yeah, let me get, let me get this and this and this. I want this and I want extra and I want that. And I want this on the side. And the other person say, okay, give me everything, but I don't want the onions and I don't want the tomatoes. The other person say, okay, give me this, but I don't want this and this and this. And then they come back with your order. They waited on you. Come on. They served you. Yes. Okay. Then they do a good job. You give them a little tip, mm -hmm. right? <laughs> ah, that's what we're supposed to do as servants of the most high God. We're supposed to go out and serve. We're supposed to go out and say, okay, what do you need me to pray for? Come on, what, Steph. Do you need, wait, do you need me to lay hands on you today? What do you need? We are there to serve. And then serving people, doing a little good deed produces good work, okay? And as God begins to work on their life, you went and put that seed out there because you waited on them and you served them, okay? And years later, they're going to say, oh, I remember that one lady, she prayed for me in the parking lot at the State of Brothers. And she, I needed some money, you know, for my car, for gas, whatever. She gave me the money, but she prayed for me. She laid hands on me. She called me and followed up. We produced the good work by obeying his will and his commandments. That means we become pleasing to him. Doobie was one, he's the person that anybody out that needs some money, that's sitting on the curb, mom, can we, can we look, can we give them some money? It was my money, but he wanted to help everybody. Nothing wrong with that. But one day we used to we used to always see this man and he would walk. He never asked nobody for nothing. And he'd walk and he'd always have a little coffee cup. And we was coming home from church and he said, well, next time we see, oh, mom, okay, next time we see him, I want to give him some money. And we, we would see him, but we wouldn't be where we can go over to him or whatever. And so one day he was walking and he said, oh, there he is. And I said, okay. So we got the little money, gave him the money. And he didn't ask. He said, thank you very much. And God bless you. We never seen that man again after that. Wow. Oh, Ooh, I wonder if that was an angel. But he, you know, Darius would do that all the time. Always trying to help somebody. We was at the cemetery one, went to go, you know, visit my mom's grave. And at the National Cemetery, they're marked by numbers. And so if you don't know the row or whatever, you know, they could tell you the area, but you'd be out there searching and searching and searching. And this lady was wandering around. Doobie went over and he said, oh, let me go help this lady find her grave, find the grave she was looking for. I'm like, this boy, but I get it because he's here there to serve at the time. He was needed to help people. And that's what we are to do. Yes. And helping somebody, we can produce good work. We never need to allow a season of pain to prevent us from producing good work. Mm, mm, mm. So it's in our waiting that we serve others, that we're to be generous, that we need to pray for others, and that we definitely need to share the word. Participating in what you're waiting on God to do God is more likely to involve us in his work. How he performs miracles and answers prayers usually proves that, right? When Jesus miraculously fed the, the 5,000, the crowds, whatever, he didn't make a, a pile of food for them to eat. The miracle happened 
when the disciples started sharing the bread, right? So in other words, they participated in the word. He didn't just go make plates and sit them there. They started sharing the bread and it kept multiplying and they started actively participating in what God was doing. So we also need to do that while we're waiting on God. We got to be active and participate in what he's doing. Sometimes we think we're just waiting on God, but actually sometimes he's just waiting on us because yes. all we got to do is make a move. He can come in and flood and do the rest. So God will always help us <clears throat> to do what we've never done before. He equips us. So if he's ready for us to go out and be uh, what are they called? The little corner preachers. He's going to equip us with that place, that corner, that audience to do that. We say, oh, I don't want to go out here and do that. Somebody might throw bottles at me. They might, but they he make it where they don't hit you. So he's going to help us do what we've never done before, as long as we're willing to take the first step. Amen. Amen. While we wait, we need to seek spiritual strength from the Lord. Our helplessness becomes especially obvious during the times of waiting, okay? When you're in a waiting period, there ain't nothing that you can do but wait, right? Amen. But he's saying that, he's telling us to seek his strength while we wait. God alone is the only person that we can find strength to tread the life's troubled waters that we have to deal with. We can't straighten out what God has made crooked. And as much as we want to fix our own problem, we got to wait on God. We got to acknowledge his sovereign purpose in the whole problem in the first place. Because if it was up to us, we would make an even bigger mess of things if we tried to do it ourselves. And I've done that, lean on my own understanding and do it myself. And it was a catastrophe if I just wait, you know, with little kids, you, my little grandson, okay, you trying to get the food together and he ready to get, grab and eat it. And you say, wait, look, wait. And he's still grabbing. And next thing he done knocked the whole bowl over. Now it's a mess. All he had to do was wait a minute, just one second. And I could have put it over there and, and you could have sat down and ate. And then what'd he say? Sorry, grandma. <laughs> it be mess everywhere. Sorry, grandma. Like, just wait. That's God. I know he tell us. Look, you about to make a mess. You wait. ain't Sarah preach this thing here today. You Woo. know, I know he do that. Just wait. I got it. Hold tight. Sit tight, go over there, wait. Yes, so we don't wanna make a bigger mess of things because God can fix things much way more, way better than we ever could. We gotta trust him. And sometimes the most difficult things for us to do is absolutely nothing at all, right? Cause you can't sit, you'd be antsy. I gotta, I gotta do something. And God's like, no, I got this. All I need you to do is wait. Hmm. That's good. Our reality should be to turn to God anyway, in faith, wait on him and seek his strength for us, right? We are needy. All of us are needy. We're needy beings. <clears throat> we should not try to fix things on our own and we need to rely more on God. So who do you rely on more than God? I rely on me a lot, but I'm not God. And so he's working on me because he done told me it several times, I got this, wait, but I rely on me and my own understanding and I go and try to fix things and I done made a mess. And so I need to learn how to just do nothing but wait. He'll give me his strength and begin to flood me because I'm not that strong. When stuff gets all chaotic and ugly, yeah, 
That's when I want to go get under the covers. Like Sister Benita say, I want to go get in the bed and get under the covers. And God is saying, well, if you wait and do it my way, you ain't got to get under the covers. I'm going to give you the strength to endure this situation and it'll have a good outcome. So while we wait, we continue to seek his spiritual strength. Again, praying and plugging into the word and writing stuff down and watching the process. Having said that, Proverbs 3 and 5 says, trust in the Lord with all your heart and do not lean on your own understanding. The Lord is good to those who wait for him. To the souls who seeks him, I'm sorry, to the soul who seeks him. For it is good that one should wait quietly for the salvation of the Lord. Mm -hmm. It is good for a man that he bear the yoke of in his youth. That's Lamentations 3. 25 through 27. Psalm 27 and 14 says, wait for the Lord, be strong and let your heart take courage. Wait for the Lord, an exclamation mark. Psalm 31, 24 says, be strong and let your heart take courage. All you who wait for the Lord, and Isaiah 40, 29 through 31. 29 says, he gives power to the faint. And to them that have no might, he increases strength. Even the youth shall faint and be weary. And the young men shall utterly fall. But they who wait for the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. And Matthew 6, 25 to 27 says, therefore, I tell you, do not be anxious about your life, what you will eat or what you will drink, nor about your body, what you will put on. It is not life, it, I'm sorry, is not life more than food and the body more than clothing. Look at the birds of the air. They neither sow nor or reap nor gather into barns, and yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Are you not more of more value than they? And which of you, by being anxious, can add a single hour to his span of life? So don't be anxious. Don't worry. Get your strength from the Lord and continue to seek his strength while you wait. Amen. We do still need to continue to live our lives while we're waiting. Not just to go and seclude ourselves or, or um, sorry, uh, lock ourselves in while we're going through a trial. We need to continue to actively seek God, be participatory in our life and watch God work. So while we wait, the main thing we need to be waiting for is Christ's final return. This world and everything in it is slowly dying. We've been in a pandemic, like I said, for almost three years. Everything is chaotic. People are impatient. People are mean and rude. They're out of control. You know, I even seen a couple of accidents yesterday and the day before, bad one. The, the, the whole truck car was turned over and there were people who were still trying to pass. Yes. They had the things out. They was almost running over the little flares. Like, what? wait, what are you doing? In a hurry, driving crazy still. There's already an accident. And I know I'm wishing for some better days to come. Hmm. But until then, we need to wait. Well, COVID definitely did cause some confusion. It's left chaos and pain and death in the world these past couple of years. And we ought to also consider that uh, there is still, was still, and is still a positive lesson in all of that. All of that destruction was that we need to learn to trust God. We need to wait on him to see what he's doing, to hear what he's doing. Instead of that, we focused on wearing masks and having to be secluded from people, right? We made that the focus. Oh, I don't, do I need to get the, the, the 
the vaccine or not. They made that the focus. That wasn't the focus. The focus was look and see what's going on and turn to God. Trust God. Wait on God. He's there for us through difficult times. And that's the one lesson that we should have took away is that we should have spent more time with God. We rely on him for even our very next breath. So why would we not trust him through this pandemic? We need to avoid worry. We wait on him patiently. We live obediently while we seek him in prayer. We need to write things down and document how God is working in our lives. We need to build our faith so we can trust God no matter what. We got to do what the Holy Spirit tells us to do. And we got to start expecting God to bring salvation to this lost and ugly world. But at the same time, we need to eagerly be awaiting Christ's final return. We can't just sit here idly by and not do anything. So while we wait, according to second, I'm sorry, Colossians 3 and 2 in the ESV, we need to set our mind on things that are above and not things that are on the earth. Okay, and then I'm going to close with Revelation chapter 22, verses 12 through 14. Okay, Revelation 22, 12 through 14, it says, and behold, I come quickly and my reward is with me to give every man according as his work shall be. I am Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end, the first and the last. Blessed are they that do his commandments that they, uh, that they may have rights uh, to the tree of life and may enter in through the gates into the city. First Thessalonians 5 and 23 says, now may the God of peace himself sanctify you completely. May your whole spirit, your soul and body be kept blameless at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. And that's what I have for you today. I praise the Lord. Father God, we give you thanks today for your power, for your patience and your long suffering, God. Thank you, God. We thank you, Lord God, for the word that went forth, Lord. Well, I know that we may feel in our hearts that we say, how long, Lord? But God, we thank you today for your long suffering mm -hmm. and for putting up with us when we are disobedient, Whew. when through our shortcomings, through our lack of faith, God, we're asking that you would continue to suffer long with us, oh God. We thank you for growing, hallelujah, and teaching us to wait on you, teaching us long suffering, oh God. And help us, oh God, and strengthen us by the power of your word. Lord, we thank you today that we still were able to go forth with uh, the service, Lord God. We thank you for blessing us in each of our individual homes, Lord God. We thank you, God, for our offering. And we ask, Lord, that you would bless all those who gave, who had a heart to, to give and wanted to give. We ask, God, that you would continue to bless them exponentially, that it would go forward for the furtherment of your kingdom, oh God, and your kingdom work. We're asking, Lord God, that you would continue to help us to follow your instruction to do your will, to do your work, oh God, to, to learn how to wait patiently on you, oh God, and stop leaning on our own understanding. We're asking you, Lord, today that you would continue to heal by the power of your mighty hand, God. We're asking you, Lord, to lay your healing hands upon each and every person with an ailment. And God, we are coming with you with expectation, believing, oh God, for a good outcome, that is far above everything that we can think, oh God. We ask and Lord that your word would be applied to our lives in every circumstance and situation that we are dealing with, God. And we're asking you, Lord, to continue this ministry that we will go forth strong, oh God, 
We know we are small in number, but we are mighty through the power of the Holy Spirit. And we're praying, oh God, that you would touch now, God, each and every individual in each and every spiritual gift that we have, oh God, that it will also be exponential, God, that we will do great work as we go outside of the four walls. Lord, we're asking God that you would just continue to bless that building, touch the building, oh God. We're praying that those, those varmints would be removed. Yes. Lord God, your, your building is a holy place. So we're asking, oh God, that you would have that situation fixed and under control. We ask, Lord, today that you would continue to touch Pastor Paula and continue to strengthen her as she leads you, us, oh God, as she follows you. Lord, we thank you for your word today. We ask that you would bless us, keep us, and cover us, God, in the mighty name of Jesus, and that we will return to service at the appointed time, ready and willing to do your work. In Jesus' name we pray, amen.